let the postseason begin. Last year, the West Lacoeste Wildcats got to the third round of the playoffs by beating Edinburgh Villa in the by district round. And then they go on to beat Del Rio in the area round. This year, they start the season against PSJA here at PSJA Stadium. Hello, everybody. Carlos Trebletto along with Mike Gonzalez for the Miriam Guetta All-State Insurance pregame show. Let the postseason begin because it is the Wildcats taking on the PSJA Bears and the Wildcats. Yeah, it's a season that started off uh, ranked number two in the Rio Grande Valley. Then they were ranked number one at one point as well. Then the injuries, they were bounced all the way down to a ranking of number 10. But they've won four games in a row, Mike, to get right. here in the postseason. Exactly, Carlos. It doesn't matter how they got here. The point is they're here. Everybody's zero and zero. I think the Wildcats are ready to make another run. Yeah, as far as the PSJ Bears, you know, people expected them to make a run here. They're a, a senior heavy team. They got a really good quarterback in trade. Well, how do they? Let's take a look at how they got to the postseason because they start off on a roll, man. What a season they had. They were taking on Adana North and they won that game 54 to 13. And then they go on and play against Harlingen South. That's right. They played against a 32 6 uh, school, winning 31 to 24. Rivera, a good victory for them there, 37 to 21. PSJA Southwest. And boy, were they winning there 41 to 14. And they were just scoring a lot of points early on in the season, right. Mike. PSJA North, they blanked them. They blanked them. That was a big game here. Always is when PSJA North and the Bears played 23 to nothing. Nothing. Economides of victory there. More points. 45 points against Edinburgh. 30 points against PSJ Memorial. You kind of get the picture. This is a team that can score a lot. But uh, the last two games of the season, you see right there, losing to Villa, losing to Edinburgh North. Two teams in the postseason. And they lose to Villa 70-22 to and to uh, Edinburgh North 28-10. to So they're kind of on a skid right now going into the postseason. Kind of opposite of what's going on with the Wildcats. Yeah, exactly, Carlos. Uh, not many teams like to go into the playoffs with that kind of skid. And the Bears got off to a great start. Uh, Lupe Rodriguez in his first year here with the PSJ High uh, turning the program around right away. The program uh, has won eight games for the first time since uh, most wins since 2008 are looking for the first playoff win since 2007 so a lot a lot in stake for the Bears tonight Carlos. and there's a lot of excitement here. you got to remember PSJ if there's one school here in the Tri-City area it is the Bears that carry on that tradition they've been around for a very long time a lot of tradition here from the 60s from the 70s right. the 80s and the 90s they love their Bears here at PSJ they do Carlos I mean we're talking about a program that not many might not know they've actually gone to the state championship in back-to-back -back back years 1962 1963 that was those were the years after Donna Ritzkins won the 1961 state championship and as you mentioned we're talking the 60s 70s 80s and even into the 90s that this program has been one of the premier programs here in the Rio Grande Valley and I guess they're back in 2018 yeah they're here they got a really good team they got a, a brand new scoreboard you can see it right behind us a yeah. beautiful picture back there gorgeous a nice structure so congratulations on uh, the PSJA yes. group for all that they have done here with the stadium it, it, it's really good I think a lot of people from West Loco East are even happy to be here or from West Loco are happy to be here to enjoy the atmosphere at uh, PSJA Stadium all right, as far as the Wildcats, uh, who are their go-to players? We talked a little bit about, you know, Trey Wajardo. Let's take a look at his numbers because for Trey Wajardo, 2,796 yards and 400 of that is rushing, Mike. Exactly, Carlos. We're talking about a young man only in his junior year. Has actually started his since his freshman year, threw over 1,000 yards last year, ran over 1,000 yards last year, has thrown 62%. So that shows that he's pretty accurate. The guy can roll out of the pocket. He has a lot of weapons to uh, to go to, and uh, he's done a great, great job. Uh, he's about 5'11", I think, about 175 pounds. So the Wildcats are, are going to have to uh, keep an eye on him to stop him. Yeah, we actually got a chance to see uh, the uh, PSJ Bears because they scrimmage against West Laco High. It was one of those scrimmages that was put together because uh, – of, uh, of the hurricane, right. they uh, Westlaco uh, High lost a scrimmage, and then so did a PSJA. They lost a scrimmage, so they they scrimmaged uh, during the summer, and we got a chance to see PSJA. And Trey Wajardo looked really, really good. Now, if they're going to be passing to anybody, look out for uh, Nathan Sanchez. Because Nathan Sanchez, over 1,000 yards uh, in receiving and 11 touchdowns for that young man. Yeah, Carlos, uh, he uh, splits to the to the outside. He can also be a slot receiver. Uh, he averages about 20 yards a catch. He's uh, the go-to guy for Trey Wajardo. He also has other weapons, Carlos. He also has uh, Joaquin Almerguet. He's number 20. He's a running back that he goes to. And, and another receiver named Nathaniel Miranda. Those guys also, uh, you know, 
they're the number two, the number three receivers. And that's another thing about Trey we got to mention that he's very good in the pocket and he reads the, the defense and looks to his fourth and fifth receivers. Yeah, you got to remember this is a team that can score a lot as well. You know, only 22 points and 10 points in the last two games. Uh, but before that, man, they were putting up 40 points and 30 points. Right. They were all over the place. Yeah, they were, Carlos. And I mean, what happened? Well, they played Edinburgh Vela and then they played Edinburgh North. Two teams in the playoffs. Before that, they played teams uh, that didn't make the playoffs except Edinburgh High. They're the only team uh, in the district that went into the playoffs. We're talking about a, a combined record of about 17 and 61, I believe is what I have in my notes, that uh, Trey Guajardo did his damage in. So tonight's going to be interesting to see how he does against the Wildcat defense. Now, of course, uh, West Lacoeste, they've had an interesting year. You know, injuries. They had uh, JC Vargas that went down. They had Roy Pedraza that went down. Freddy Gonzalez, another running back that went down. Then they had to go into the classroom and, and, and bring out Derek Ibarra, who decided not to play this year. He was going to concentrate just on track. They get him out of the classroom, and now, uh, you know, he's their starting running back. He is, Carlos. Over 400 yards rushing for this young man. Was not bad, considering <laughs> he wasn't even on the roster when the season started. And as you mentioned, he was in a classroom in a speech class, and Coach Burgett comes knocking into his door and, and ask him if he would like to join a team. He said yes, and he's made a major contribution. And then we got to mention uh, uh, Josh Gonzalez, the younger brother of Bobby Gonzalez, another guy to keep an eye on, number 25, who's also contributed last part of the season. He's done a great job. Yeah, but we also have some good news. We're kind of looking around here for uh, number one, JC Vargas, yes. because uh, word I is that, you know, he, you know, we had a hematoma, so he was injured at the, uh, what, after, in, during the San Benito game? Yes. But he's been out for a few weeks, but from what we understand, he is healed, he's better, and we'll find out. But they say he might play tonight? He may play tonight, Carlos, according to the report uh, that RGBSports.com reported mm -hmm. that he uh, he is scheduled to start. I see him stretching out there with the team right now. So he is out And uh, the question is, how much will he play? How healthy is he? Well, we're going to find out. Because remember, he contributed on both sides of the ball. So Offense and defense, exactly. And he was the uh, all-area, all-purpose uh, player of the year for the uh, for the monitor this past year. So he would definitely be someone to look out for in this game tonight. All right, so this team really is Richard Lefevre's team because if you need someone to run with the football, he's the one that's been carrying the load for the, uh, for the Wildcats. Los Fresnos, he had 13 carries for 104 yards, and that's when people started to really realize, hey, man, this kid can run. Yeah, absolutely, Carlos. When you have a, a body like his that's so big, and so strong and that's very athletic and I mean Coach Burgett kind of had to dig really deep and trust uh, Richard Lefevre and he's really really come through and you would have probably thought at the beginning of the year that he wouldn't be the leading rusher for this team and as it turns out he is. Yeah against Harlingen he had 21 carries for 145 yards and three touchdowns against the Rivera didn't carry much only six carries for 35 yards Harlingen South 101 yards three touchdowns in that game and then against Brownsville Hannah oh last week what a game yes. he had 185 yards rushing he scored three touchdowns on the ground three touchdowns in the air there is no doubt at this point of the season and we have seen Richard Lefevre develop from a sophomore quarterback yes. to what he is here now today remember Carlos last year he only tossed four touchdown passes and four interceptions now he comes into this game I believe 17 touchdowns five interceptions and is on pace to if they play a couple of playoff games to maybe perhaps throw 2,000 yards he's making his case if you ask me Carlos for all district MVP yeah, and what I really like about him is that uh, the confidence level. You know, we've done yes. a couple of interviews with him. We've been around him throughout the years. Always a very confident, humble uh, young man. But I think he has just a little bit more confidence now here in the postseason. And we and we saw it coming even during the preseason when he even pleaded to Coach Burgett, let me throw the football, let me throw the football. And then stuff happens. You, you had injuries. And him and Burgett, I'm sure, got together. And I wouldn't doubt for a second he told Burgett, you know, let me run the offense. Let me give me the ball give me the ball he's really really come through and he actually told Burgett from the interview mm -hmm. you had with him that coach we're going to make the playoffs and sure enough the Wildcats are in the playoffs yeah and uh, don't forget about the passing game because he could also pass with the football as well uh, we only went through his rushing yards because we know what he can do but his passing yards are some of the best that the Wildcats have ever seen right ever seen Carlos uh, he becomes the second quarterback in Wildcat history to throw for it over 1,500 yards. Our buddy, Coach John Basel, his son, was the first to do it. But as I mentioned, if they play a couple of playoff games, we, there's an outside chance that Lefevre can surpass 2,000 yards. 
All right, we, uh, we got to talk a little bit about the defense, Mike. Yes, Gonzalez. absolutely. You know, we've been talking a lot about the offense because of all the drama that they have been going through because of the uh, the injuries right, to Pedraza, right. Gonzalez, and, and Vargas. But that defense has been holding holding steady, you know, all season long. Let's take a look at some of those players that uh, who have been doing such a good job for uh, West Laquise. Freddy Cardenas, 123 tackles. He's been consistent. He's even scored a couple of touchdowns. Right. Mike Gonzalez, no relation to my buddy here, 99 <laughs> tackles for him. And then Gerald Gar and Jacob Banda, these are two individuals, the sack leaders for West Lacoise with a six sack seats. And then the sophomore, Ramsey Vasquez, six interceptions for him. They, they're only giving up, on average, 259 yards per game. That's very rock solid, Carlos. These are guys that played together last year that went three deep, and uh, eight starters are back. And uh, Ramsey Vasquez, six interceptions to lead the team, only a sophomore, so making a big time contribution. I wonder uh, who uh, Coach Guzman. Uh, well, who he will use to go up against uh, number one Nathan uh, when the Bears have the ball. Yeah, that's going to be an interesting matchup uh, most definitely. And then also Trey Wajardo. Let's go back to him because the Wildcats are going to have to find a way to, to stop him or, right. or to slow him down. Well, Mike Gonzalez, uh, he had a chance to talk to uh, Coach René Guzman, the defensive coordinator of West Lacuiz, and here's what he had to say about slowing down Trey Wajardo. Yeah. <clears throat> Alright, Coach, uh, well, you guys have a big... Uh challenge up ahead with the PSJ Bears. Uh, they have uh, one of the better quarterbacks across the valley. How are you guys going to slow them down? What is the game plan? Well, the game plan, I can't really discuss that, but uh, we're working on it as far as uh, who he is. We know what he can do. You know, he's pretty, pretty agile on his feet, so uh, we'll be looking for him to throw the ball and run the ball. And, you know, that's PSJ. He is PSJI, and right now that's our main focus, as well as the other receivers. they got good receiving core. And that's just it. He has a pretty good uh, uh, receiving core that he can go to, uh, running backs and whatnot. So it's not just him, but it's a one. It's a whole package deal. So our focus right now is on stopping the offense. And how do you stop an offense like that? What are, what you guys must do? I'm sure it goes back to fundamentals. I'm sure it goes back to little things like that, huh? Uh, we're gonna go back and then, you know we watch film and stuff like that. But bottom line, we gotta play East football, and that's controlling the ball on offense giving the ball back to the offense and letting them do their thing. Uh, we focus one down at a time, one play at a time, and we stress getting to the football. What has impressed you about Trey as you watch him on film? Uh, his mobility, uh, definitely his mobility, and he doesn't make a lot of mistakes, and uh, he's smart with the football. So he's, he's one of their better athletes, and, and rightfully so. That's why he's playing quarterback, and uh, that's what we got to stop. All right, well, uh, last year was a clean sweep for a 32-6, a Mike, remember, in the by-district round yes. of the playoffs. And it's getting there uh, because last night, Los Fresnos, they beat Edinburgh 34-14, uh, to and then San Benito beat Edinburgh North 50-7. to We'll see what happens tonight between, you know, the uh, the Wildcats and PSJA Bears. And then uh, also we got uh, Edinburgh Vela, who's going to be uh, involved in the game. They'll be taking on Hannah also later on tonight. So we'll see if that clean sweep uh, does happen. Now, if West Laco East, if they win tonight... You know, which we're hoping that they will win. I, I, yes. I don't know if they're, I guess they would be considered the favorite. We, we really don't know. Depends right. what everyone else is saying. But if Westlaco East wins tonight, they'll be playing on the road. They will be playing at Laredo Alexander next week, Friday at 7.30, because Laredo Alexander won last night by a score of 42 to 17. Yeah, I was a little bit surprised, Carlos, because uh, when we did a little bit of research on Laredo Alexander, both mm -hmm. you and I, we saw that Laredo Alexander was 5-5 five and five going into this game. But I believe they're in a hot streak right now. I don't know if maybe they were also banged up or in the year and got healthy or not, but they're about a four or five game winning streak, including last night's win against a McAllen Road team who was at home. And uh, yeah, Laredo Alexander really took it to him. So, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, you never really know when it comes uh, to the playoffs. You know, West Laquise, they're riding a hot streak. This, I anticipate this game being a close game, a very competitive game. Uh, right. So we'll see what happens. Laredo Alexander, yeah, 5-5 five and five overall record. But they were in a very competitive district yes. over there in Laredo. Okay, well, we're hoping this is not the last game of the season, but we did put together some of the top plays for West Laquise of the 2017 season. So let's take a look at that right now. Welcome to your 2017 Let's take a look season. at some of the I big plays Lance of the 2017 the season. <laughs> On opening night, head coach Mike Burgett opens the playbook. Here we have a reverse flea flicker. Richard Lefevre finds JC Vargas wide open. Touchdown! Those two seniors with big nights. Later, Lefevre looks for Vargas again. He hobbles, he concentrates. 
and he hauls the pigskin into the end zone. Wildcats roll 62 to nothing. We move on to week three. Big road game against Edinburgh Economides. The Fever, play action, finds JC Vargas. Beautiful move into pay dirt. Vargas with three touchdown catches. The Fever with a career high four touchdown passes. East takes two of three in non-district. Let's go to Tinaco Bowl number six. Ramsey Vasquez with a big night. Three interceptions for the young sophomore, including this one early in the ball game to set the tempo. Watch the replay here. Vasquez reads the quarterback, breaks for the ball, and makes an athletic play. Wildcats roll to even the head-to-head -head series. The next week, unbeaten Sam and Needle comes to town. West Lico East fought hard, dealt with injuries. Here, they catch the Greyhounds off guard. After a timeout, quick snap. Sam and Needle barely getting back. It's Dimas Alvarez down the sideline. Great blocking. Falls inside the five. It set up a score, but the Wildcats fall short. We come back to Lefevre. This is against Los Fresnos. We've seen his arm. Now it's time to showcase his power. Watch him muscle his way towards the goal line, carrying defenders. That sets up a score. Then, we know about the great special teams at East. Here, the Wildcats with a big play. Great hit, and it's Jaime Benuelos with the fumble recovery, but it was not enough. After falling twice, here's where East gets rolling. First, up against Hardingen. Wildcats with some big plays. La Fever goes on top to Jaime Benuelos. He goes all the way. Westlico East in control, up 20 to 17 late in the fourth quarter. It's third down, game on the line. A first down clinches the game. La Fever finds a gap, right side. First down and a lot more. Wildcats, first time in school history over the Cardinals. The momentum carries into the rest of the season. East comes back home. Ramsey Vasquez, we know what he can do on defense, but look at this run on special teams. He takes his punt, 85 yards. Some nice moves, great blocking. Goes across the field, all the way to the house. Wildcats with an easy 42 to seven win. In the season finale, Westlico East travels to Brownsville against Hannah. This is a wild affair. The Fever, responsible for all six touchdowns, including this toss to Al Madrano. The senior passed for three and ran for three more. now is a senior running back, Roy Pedraza, and that's right, you're still a running back for the Wildcats. I know you're not playing uh, here tonight, and, and I know you, you kind of have mixed emotions about this game, but uh, just tell us a little bit about the rehab and how that go is going, because I know it's, it's grueling work. Yeah, um, my rehab's going pretty good with uh, Dr. McCleary over there at Triumph Therapy. He's doing a really, really good job of keeping me healthy and getting my knee back in shape to the way we want it to be. And uh, I actually go up to San Antonio on Wednesday to go drain the fluid out. Oh, Roy, I mean, just, just talk to us about what you're going through right now. I'm sure this is a little tough for you, isn't it? Uh, but I'm sure at the same time, you've been with the team this whole time. What was practice like this week? And I'm sure you're encouraging them. That you know what they're going through. Well, yeah, this team is a great team. Coach, or Coach Burgett uh, got this team prepared pretty good for this game. And, you know, it, it hurts me not to be playing, but God has other plans for me. And, Absolutely. you know, um, just I know these guys are going to do great with Rich and JC playing tonight. And I think Freddie might play too. But, you know, I, I just know this team's going to do good. All right. Yeah. Well, like you said, God has a plan for you. And uh, we'll be hearing more about uh, Roy Pedraza after he graduates from West Lacuis. Thanks a lot, Roy. Thanks for Roy. joining us here. Appreciate oh, it. Enjoy. All right. So, uh, you know, that is, it is tough for him. He was walking off yeah. here onto the field, and he did, did not have a smile on his face. He was, you know, not, not looking too happy 
because he's not playing here tonight. It's got to be very, very tough for a senior like that to right. not be able to be on the field with his, with his it, legs. It was a different look, Carlos. I mean, it was still pretty intense, but it's a different kind of intense that he has because, I mean, he's still going to be cheering for the team. He's, he is still a part of the team. I mean, and he knows what it's like to be in this position. His job is still to be the, the leader that he was with before the season started. He is one of the captains, and uh, I'm sure he's going to be helping out uh, Derek Ibarras. He's going to be helping out uh, JC Vargas. He's going to be helping out uh, Randy Cardorsas, you know. You know, he's still going to be part of the team encouraging them, and, and, you know, I'm sure he's going to do a great job. Yeah, it's going to be all hands on deck for this game. He sure. even said that Freddie Gonzalez is suited out and that he might also be playing. So having Freddie back and having JC back, those are just two weapons. Of course, we'll have to see if, if they're full 100% or are they going 80 90%. Right. But uh, it's it's – you know, like we talk about confidence booster, just having them back there, it's got to be uh, something encouraging for the Wildcats. Yeah, I bet, Carlos, when they came uh, Monday morning, and I'm sure Coach Berget addressed the team, and he probably told them that JC is back, and I'm sure the team rallied. I'm sure they got excited for it, and I'm sure they were eager to get back to practice, and I'm sure practice was very intense and ready to go. All right, well, it is the postseason, and we're going to be actually broadcasting this game live here on the WIC.us, so look out for that. Scott Harrison will have the call along with John Boswell and the whole crew from KWIS is here to produce a great show for you, for you here this evening. After the broadcast, go to our Facebook page where you're at right now watching this uh, pregame show for postgame analysis from Mike and I and, of course, interviews, of course. All right, well, that'll wrap it up here at PSJ Stadium for Mike Gonzalez and everybody here at KWIS. I'm Carlos Robledo. Thanks for joining us here on the Miriam Guetta Allstate Insurance pregame show.